Hello and welcome to episode 3 of the Vintage Park here on Let's Play Planet Coaster on Theme Park Worldwide. I hope you all had an absolutely fantastic Christmas and of course we're only a couple of days away now from New Year's Eve. And so I wish all of you a very happy new year and I hope that 2019 is absolutely fantastic for all of you out there. Now in terms of episode 3, there's going to be a lot going on in this episode uh, in terms of different projects that I want to complete. Starting off just here, uh, as you can see, uh, with the vintage cars ride uh, now I want to make sure that all the landscaping is complete all around this and then I'm sort of going to be leaving this right hand side of the park for a little while and working on the projects up to the left hand side as you can probably see by the title of the video I will be installing a cable car uh, a chairlift inside uh, of this park in this episode so I look forward to putting that in uh, now it might look a bit odd where I'm going to place it as you'll see a little bit later in the episode um, but it'll all sort of make sense as we move forward with this park uh, because I always say this with transport rides really you don't want to put them in uh, last minute unless they're outside of the park uh, you want to sort of build them early on and then sort of work your park around it uh, like parks that have given me a lot of inspiration with that sort of idea is like Europa Park in Germany uh, that's got the train it's got two monorails uh, you know and they've worked it all into the park uh, really well and I know that the park railway has been there for a long time at Europa Park uh, it was one of the first first attraction they put in. Um, so, you know, I want to make sure that uh, with this cable car that I'm going to be installing, uh, that it sort of works in with the rest of the landscape. I don't want to build my park uh, and then put it in and it looks like a bit of an eyesore. And this park's all about sight lines. So I want to make sure that uh, I do that right. Um, but anyway, more about that later on. And also, I'm going to be working on the fun house. Uh, now, I started to put in the building for it. At the end of the last episode, in uh, episode two, I actually put an amusement park light up sign uh, on the side of that show building and inside there is going to be my fun house um, so I'm going to be working on that I'm not going to do all the interior of that in this episode but I'm going to put a ride in there uh, like I say because you can't actually get a fun house style attraction in the game yet you never know one day we might do um, so I'm just going to put in a flat ride in there and uh, yeah like put a bit more scenery and stuff around it inside um, I'll come back and do the interior scenery uh, a little bit later on in the series because I want to get on and put in this uh, this cable car. I'm really excited to have a little look at these. It's come as part of the new Magnificent Rides pack, uh, which is a DLC which has just been released uh, within the week from Planet Coaster. And I must say, it features some fantastic rides. Really impressed with all the stuff in there. And there's quite a lot of uh, items that have been released in that pack and um, that will work beautifully with this vintage park. Obviously, I'm using all sorts of different packs here. you know we're using like the Christmas lights uh, what you can get uh, what they released as part of a Christmas uh, a series and then of course we've got uh, the vintage pack itself what was released a few months back uh, and yeah like little bits from everywhere that all come together um, but yeah like there's enough in this game now to make this really nice heritage park that I wanted to do uh, so yeah I'm really pleased with how it's come on and I'm surprised at how much I've managed to do actually by episode three I mean to think we're at this stage already only three episodes in I'm really pleased actually uh, and like I say, there's at least one episode a week going on uh, on the channel. So yeah, it's going to progress nice and quickly, this park. Uh, gives you guys a lot to see and also a lot to suggest. Uh, now, there's been some fantastic comments on the past couple of episodes, uh, especially on episode two, where people have uh, given me loads of different thoughts uh, to different rides that would like to see me built. Of course, a Schwarzkopf steel roller coaster is one that everyone has commented saying, Sean, you've got to build it and I will be building it. Uh, I did mention it in the last episode. Um, but I'll say it again, I am going to be building one within the next few episodes. Uh, there's another wooden coast I want to build next. Well, I want to do a side friction, I think. That's my plan. Uh, uh, to the left-hand side, just by the fun house and a bit further back. But I'll talk more about that later in the episode. Um, but yeah, like a Schwarzkopf Looper will definitely be being built. A lot of people have said a ghost train. Uh, again, I have touched on this, but I will be building a retro ghost train. Nothing like the motion-based ride that I built uh, back at Volcano Springs. That was a huge show building with massive grand scenes and loads of stuff going on. Uh, not at all. I'm going to do a traditional ghost train. Uh, like I put on a POV actually the other day of a really good ghost train, and that's Terror Castle at uh, Breen Leisure Park. Make sure you check that out. 
uh, or Breen Theme Park as it's known now. If you watch the vlog, uh, you'll see how we had a bit of a laugh with the name because there's so many different names. Fun City, Breen Leisure Park, Breen Theme Park. It's been all sorts over the years, but I think it's Breen Theme Park now. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, check out that because I love a good ghost train and there's some really good effects on that. So I want it a bit like Blackpool's ghost train, a bit like um, what can be seen there in that latest POV from Breen. Uh, and also, there's a really good ghost train. Uh, what I quite like, some of the classic effects. And it, I, when I say classic effects, where you go on it and you think, oh my God, you know, look at that sort of feel. Uh, Great Yarmouth Pleasure Beach has got one as well, you know, and it had all the facade painted up and actually for this year. It looked really nice. The only issue with that, it's got no real audio. Uh, and I know you could argue and say the ghost train at Pleasure Beach hasn't really got any audio. Um, but, but it's not got a soundtrack, but it has got audio in each scene, you know. But yeah, it doesn't need a soundtrack, so to speak, an old school ghost train. It's not like Jewel Alton Towers where everything needs to be fully in sync in all of the rooms. But I say that, it's Jewel like that these days. <laughs> it's not, is it, with some of the things what they did with the UV uh, black lights in there. But uh, anyway, as you can see, uh, carrying on with all this area around by the vintage cars now, uh, all the roof details on there. Uh, all of these buildings, as I said in the last episode, around the front are all following a very similar uh, theme with all these grand turrets. I want them to look like all these nice palaces and things. Uh, and it's coming on really nicely. I'm pleased with that. This is going to be a uh, restaurant uh, just up there. Like, I'd have it as a sit-down restaurant. Again, it's not available in the game to have it uh, fully how I'd like it. I know, I know you can put in loads of benches. I could have put a path going up there. Uh, but I want it to be quite a formal sit-down restaurant, you know, where you'd be shown to your seat, so to speak. And um, So it's not actually going to be operational in the game. Uh, but I'm just putting the seating up there. And, of course, you get a really nice view across all the landscaping of the vintage cars and also of the scenic railway there as well, uh, which is just behind it. But yeah, it's coming together really nicely. Some people commented saying, Sean, put some more lights in. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing here, more archways and things. I know that these old school amusement parks, well, even amusement parks in general, have got a lot of lights. How beautiful is Blackpool Pleasure Beach at night when you walk round and you see the Big Dipper all lit up, Icon. I'd say Icon is one of the best roller coasters that's lit up at night in the world and I've seen a lot of rides been to a lot of theme parks and I'm not just saying it because I'm biased because it's Blackpool and it's here in the UK honestly with how that coaster is lit up it's so bright and I think it's the track colour that makes it as well uh, with it being the silver track uh, and you've got the, the light shining up on it the white lights it just glows beautifully as you can see here, putting in a bit of uh, scenery, putting in a little wagon in there. I did have a little car at first, but I thought, actually, no, it doesn't really work. Let's put an old school wagon in there uh, and put some more rocks and things around it. I'm not going too overkill on the uh, scenery around this. It's more about landscaping. Again, it's not a theme park. Um, but yeah, I do want to do some sort of log flume ride in this park. Um, now, Coney Island or Astro World, as it's known, over in uh, New York City, they're actually building a log flume and have a little look at the plans for that if you just google it and um, you know have a look at that because I want to do something similar you can see it's got a lot of uh, amusement park style lighting on it it is an amusement park and um, so I think something like that would work quite well again nothing that's massively heavily themed um, but yeah some sort of log flume I'd like to do in this park at some point and I might do it down the front of the park actually just sort of past uh, the vintage cars but like I say for the next couple of episodes I'm going to be focusing uh, up the other end which is uh, where we are here. And here it is, the ride that everyone has been campaigning for uh, for a long time, myself included. Here it is, it is the classic uh, chairlift. And uh, look at that, like the station area and everything, it looks fantastic. As you can see here, uh, we raise it up. It's nice and easy to build, actually. This only took me about 10 minutes to build. Really, really easy to construct. Obviously, using your normal tools uh, that you would do for the other rides uh, with extending the sections. Uh, and if you extend the sections longer, it means that you haven't got as many supports. And if you have them shorter, uh, it means that you've got more supports. So I just wanted a nice sort of realistic mix, kind of going with that feel of the old Disneyland Skyway, uh, especially the one in Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World where it went past It's a Small World. Um, yeah, there did used to be a cable car at the Disney parks. Crazy, isn't it? Um, but yeah, like that sort of feel, how it's going to intertwine with buildings and things. Uh, and like I said, what, seven or eight minutes ago, uh, you might be thinking, oh God, it sticks out like a sore thumb at the moment. But don't worry about that. Uh, I know what 
I'm doing here. It's going to be uh, built into all these different other rides and buildings and things. Um, but as I mentioned, I want to go down that Europa Park route of having all the transport intertwined with things. Uh, you know, the EP Express, the uh, monorail, what they've got at Europa Park. I know that was built in the 90s, uh, you know, quite a lot later after the park was built in 75. But they managed to intertwine it really well uh, with the park, in my opinion. Uh, but that's Europa, isn't it? That have moved all sorts of stuff to do that. Um, but yeah, with this, I want to make sure that from the off, it all looks right. And I'm thinking on that corner, now I've put them the, that pathway in and I've put the actual uh, chairlift in, I'm feeling like my side friction coaster is going to work up that corner. And I'm going to give it a bit of a Swiss theme as well uh, when I do that. As you can see here, uh, we've got a bit of on-ride footage from the chairlift just to give you a bit of an idea of how it looks from on ride. You can change the speed setting as well. I've got it on the uh, standard one it came with because I feel like that's the, uh, the right speed that this sort of ride would go. Hopefully in the future it'd be nice if we could have different gondolas on there. Obviously this works beautifully for my amusement park using this ski lift style. But it'd be nice to have uh, like bigger gondolas that can maybe seat 10 people. Uh, you know, that sort of thing would be quite nice in the future. Uh, but for now I'm just chuffed that we've got this and it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm really pleased uh, with this. I mean you look at the detailing on it, the speed, the cable itself. It just looks so realistic. That's the thing, we've been wanting this for a long time but I'm glad that Frontier you haven't just rushed it uh, you know they've took the time on it and it looks absolutely fantastic and a few different angles there of the uh, chairlift in action and uh, yeah next up it's uh, over onto the fun house and as you can see I've installed a uh, spinning ride inside there well, it's got all your traditional fairground lights and everything on fits in quite well there but I'm going to extend the building out a little bit more uh, just so it doesn't stick out and uh, yeah in terms of landscaping uh, I'll do all the queue line which will be outside uh, this front section with a little bit of interior queue and also the building itself again it'll be following a similar theme uh, this will be the one of the last buildings now probably the cable car building what I'll do in the next episode um, but yeah other than that this will be the last big building uh, that I'm going to be doing for a while of this style before changing up the style completely uh, behind the scenic railway and working on some different attractions behind there like the ghost train uh, the Schwarzkopf looping coaster and of course what I'm going to build in episode 4 the side friction roller coaster. Uh, as you can see here, then just working on that queue line, putting it outside now, and I mess about with this quite a lot. To be honest, uh, you'll see in these episodes, I don't always get it right first time. You just got to practice, and practice makes perfect in this game. Uh, and there's still a lot of things that you know I can learn from Planet Coaster. Like I say, these aren't tutorial videos. Uh, it's me just playing the game and and building things and getting you guys involved in it, really. You know. Um, but yeah, there's some fantastic tutorials of Planet Coaster, and I've watched loads of them myself and that's also helped me inspire uh, my designs for these parks really uh, and what I put together uh, but I'm really pleased with how this amusement park's coming on I was really chuffed at how the studios park came out Ocean Bay Studios uh, you know it was a big step up for me I think from uh, Volcano Springs as much as I enjoyed doing Volcano Springs I just feel like uh, the past two parks like this is coming on really nicely uh, for the little details and and starting to put a bit more detail into the buildings and things now and as much as you can't really go too overboard with these amusement park style buildings uh, because there's not a lot of options really for what you can do with them uh, but it's quite nice just to keep them uh, not too much but also make sure that they still look nice as well uh, as you can see with all the colours and things it all follows a very similar theme along the front there as well with the dark blue uh, and also the red there as well and you know it's quite a dark red isn't it it's not like a, vi a vibrant uh, bright red that you can get I do a little bit of messing about here because I feel like the archways are a bit too much after I've put them in. Uh, I put them in on both of my columns there and I think actually mm, it's too much and you'll see in a moment I uh, take them ones out on the right hand side just because I just don't think it looks right and that's the thing with this game, it is all about experimenting and trying out different things and at moments you think actually uh, you know, oh this does look right or no it doesn't look right um, you know, so it's just about uh, testing things out really and a lot of people do comment and say, you know, Sean, I, I I've got Planet Coaster, uh, but I'm not very good at it. How, how do you know where to put things? Honestly, you just got to go with the flow. Sometimes I might get a bit of A4 paper. I won't do it on the computer in any software or anything, nothing fancy. I'll get a piece of A4 paper and I'll just sort of draw out a 
basic plan of where I want a few things to go. And I'm not talking about putting all the details on it. I'll just literally draw a square box for what will be this fun house, uh, you know, and, and a square box for where the scenic railway is and the wild mouse, uh, just to give me a bit of an idea on where things are actually going to be in the park. Um, but, you know, I don't always do that. I mean, with this, I've done like one plan on paper with how I wanted it to look. And, you know, it looks quite similar to that. Uh, but now I didn't, I've not done anything else sort of further back the scenic railway on any plans because I feel like once you get your first part in, the rest of it just kind of flows, if you know what I mean. Like, as soon as I put in that scenic railway in episode one, I knew that everything else was just going to sort of flow around it, really, and, uh, and and things might change. So you don't want to plan too much either. Uh, but there's no harm in just having a bit of a basic plan of where you want things to go. But don't do it like, you know, it's got to be done like that, and you build it and think, oh, actually, it doesn't look that good. But I'll keep it anyway because it was on the plan. Uh, and what I'm doing now is a perfect example. Uh, I thought that, oh, it might look nice. Uh, having that a bit further across but now I've realized when I've put the clown's face on the front that it just doesn't look right so you can see I'm just moving it across and it's not a problem it took a couple of minutes just to rectify that and happy days I also need to start to think about what I want to do at the front of the park do I want to do a street a bit like uh, Ocean Boulevard at Blackpool Pleasure Beach maybe a couple of hotels on the front even build stuff what isn't owned by the park just to make it look more realistic or do I want to leave it open so people can fully see in and just have like a, a bit of a low wall with some grand entrances a bit like Liseberg where there's just a wall going round and you can see in quite a lot. Uh, Grona Lund's the same actually, you can see in there quite a bit so you know I'd like to know your thoughts on that give me some suggestions down below uh, and I keep saying you know keep your names coming in for the park, uh, there's been some fantastic names so far uh, but keep them coming in and in 100% I'm going to name the park in the next episode I said I might do it this episode but I'm still not 100% sure on what I want to call this park so uh, keep them names coming in and in the next episode I'll look back through the past uh, three episodes and pick a name uh, for this amusement park um, but yeah like just a couple of minutes to go until the end of the episode and yeah I'm really pleased with how it's all coming together uh, the exterior of the fun house is where the focus is just there now uh, and just putting in all them different areas there following on with that normal colour scheme and uh, like I say in the next episode I'm going to go in with a side friction coaster so let's see how uh, that one works I think it'll uh, work really well with the feel of this park uh, a lot of people did say you know they're surprised that I didn't put that in first and have that as more of a scenic railway uh, but I did want the scenic railway to be a traditional wooden roller coaster uh, that's huge you know I wanted it to be like that wow effect right in the centre of the park uh, and that'll be the biggest ride at this park uh, for a long time uh, I'm not saying you know I'm not ruling out that I might put in something bigger I might do uh, but there's a high chance that that'll always remain the biggest ride at the park um, but we definitely want to move forward with things there's going to be a few more wooden rides uh, that are going to go in I might do a traditional style roller coaster a bit like what's now Nickelodeon Streak but if you imagine it as Velvet Coaster might do something a bit like that I already said in episode 1 that I really want to do a dueling wooden co coaster or something a bit like Grand National would be quite nice um, so yeah you know keep your comments coming in keep your suggestions coming in on these episodes because uh, I'm really loving making them uh, so yeah thank you very much to everyone who supports theme park worldwide and especially everyone who watches the let's play planet coaster episodes uh, because it's really nice I, I love making these and a lot of time goes into them uh, like, I love playing the game I like recording what I do and I don't really play any other parks now outside of what I record for you guys because I've really tried to up the amount of planet coaster that I'm putting out there because everyone seems to be really enjoying it you know so that's what I'm uh, planning on doing as we move forward and tune in the next episode for another major ride uh, where I'm going to be building this side friction coaster and also doing some landscaping around that because as we move to the left of where this queue line is where I'm putting in some planting now uh, it's going to be all sort of Swiss themed so stay tuned for that thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode